would it be you calling me down? down, down what you do it for? My foolish heart turns out to start. Now, one time. What you do it for? All that I ask is all that you see. What you do it for? Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Fish with Pits and another jacked up uh, introduction. I am supposed to actually be in Utah right now. Um, I don't, long story short, I'm not. Um, so I am rushing to go meet somebody and um, we're gonna head out there. So instead of some cool B-roll and some cool whatever else, we're just gonna haul ass. So I will uh, talk to you guys when we get to Utah. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, Today's video, today I'm going to be focusing on catching summertime bass in a place you've not been. Um, I've never been here before. Uh, we're going to Sand Hollow. I've never been fishing here. Um, and I have no idea where the fish are going to be. So I did some homework last night and I'm going to use what little knowledge I do know to find the summertime bass that seem to be so elusive for most of us. So, damn, sorry about the yawns. We'll catch up soon. Let's roll. All right, guys, we made it here just barely. <laughs> yeah, just barely. The, uh, the engine doesn't want to work. The main engine doesn't want to work. And then um, I'm going to drop all my poles into the water because I don't pay attention. Um, but we are here. So Diego's untangling his stuff because we're in a tiny, tiny boat. And uh, <laughs> we're trying to, like, do the best we can. But I'm going to start I'm gonna start with this. It's a Kitek on a VMC jig head or swim bait head. I um, don't really know what the hell. What is this head called, man? Is it like a jig head, basically? Yeah. It's like a, a swim jig head swim jig. yeah swim jig head swim jig um i have it paired up it's uh it's paired up right now to 12 pound fluoro and then i have braid on the other side of it because um i just always keep this rod like this i'm too too lazy to not do it i'm just gonna do some uh some fan casts real quick see if anybody's hungry and uh we're sitting in 12 foot of water the water temp right now is uh 12 and a half 12 and a half degrees right now. So, um, we're just gonna try it out, man. See what we can get. There you go, dude. Diego with the first fish of the day. So there you go, guys. Tip number one, no matter what time of the day it is, what is it, 10 right now? 10 Utah time, I think. Diego's using a top water and uh, the fish don't care what time it is. There you go. If you ever wanna know a fish will Eat top water in the middle of the day. There's your proof. There's your proof. Clear as day. They don't care. Whoa. Did I just hit you? I didn't hit you, right? No, you hit that. The pole? Yeah, you hit the rod. Sick. I am... I'm on fire today, man. Okay, I'm back after the... What is it, my 45th lure change now? Oh I'm out here breaking records. Um, like an asshole. So Diego's still using the frog. He's had some bites on it. I just switched up to a properly hooked weedless Kitek. So, um, let's see what happens, man. We're still looking for fish number two. Drop shot tip for everybody at home. You wanna increase your hookups. Don't mind the length of the weight, but you see how I have my, my hook straight like that, okay? The, the shank is parallel to the line. If your hook is twisted any other way, just take this spare leader line and run it through the top. Once you've tied your knot, just before you put your weight on, just take the tag and thread it back through and then pull it. And then once you've got it tight, your hook should stick out just like that. So that way when you put your bait on, you know, just standard That's... nose hook. You know, right through. Oh, dude. Someone just hit it. You hit it? Yeah. So you, once you get your nose hook, your hook stays oh. straight. Get him. Got him. There you go. Trolling a Kai Tech. Yeah. There you go. That's a good one. Boat flip. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah, man. Yeah. You finished the tutorial and you <laughs> that's a good one. Dude. Yeah. That's how, we're, that's how we roll. There we go, guys. Get a picture of that. It's a nice guy right there. 
Hell yeah, man. Maybe I will I should, take him. Maybe I should give tips more often. Nice, healthy fish. Yeah, dude, give tips the whole time I'm fishing, please, all right? There you go. Badass. All right. Thanks for biting, man. I really appreciate that. Seriously. Woo! I'm just letting this Kytec sink all the way down. And then, um, there we go. Ah, uh, hold on. Yes. Dude, it, it, dude, they're hitting it on the drop, bro. Seriously. Yeah, number two. Oh. Dude, he popped himself off. Look at that hole in his face. This little guy eating. He's doing good, man. All right, finally found some fish. what I was trying to say before that fish bit because I'm just casting this Kai tech and then letting it drop and then bringing it back up from the bottom it looks like there's a mixture of grass and a whole bunch of other random crap down there and uh, I think these fish it's just a lot easier for them to hang out in that nice dude oh Diego with the fatty I'm trying not to. What is that on? Uh, uh, grub. <laughs> on the grub? grub yeah. Nice, dude. Alright, here it comes, ready? Yep. There you go. There you go, dude. Thank you, sir. Of course. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah, He's hooked I'm in his gill. Here, let I'm me uh. I knew there was going to be off that rock. Did yeah, I say there had to be? Come on. There we go. There we go. Oh, I did it. Ah, sick. Oh, dude. Oh, that thing's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh man, I don't know if we're gonna. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. It's another good fish, though, from yeah, fish Sand Lake or Sand Hollow, wherever the hell we are. Dude, that's a good fish. Let me try to. Uh, let me just make sure we're not gonna crash into shit. <sighs> Dude, Diego's another healthy fish. Good shit, man. Awesome. Awesome fish. Alright. Ready? Right. Yeah, that was sick, man. So I've been talking in a while, so let me talk to you guys real quick what we're doing. Diego's using the hula grub, and he is just like killing these fish out here, man. Um, I'm back to this Kytec. Trying to fish it parallel with this bank. Um, these fish seem to be hanging right here on this. Uh oh, hold on. Yeah. These fish are hanging out on this uh, ledge of sorts. It's kind of, the water gets a little bit deeper right here and drops off. But this waves, these waves are pushing all the phytoplankton in, which are pushing in all the small bait fish, which mean the bass right now are having a smorgasbord. So it's not, it's midday-ish. I don't know, it's one-ish. Um, it's like one o'clock out here. And these fish, um, they're still eating. They don't care. They didn't get the memo. Right, guys we're coming to an end to this trip and we're uh trying to get a couple last fish before we head out of here so i don't know if you guys can hear diego but he was saying all over here there's a bunch of ledges bunch of transitions um and this is where you want to look this is where you want to look for fish um he said basically it comes down to fish want places to hide and they want places to ambush and this is where you're going to be able to find a lot of fish just hanging out looking for a meal Diego has been a pro today with his hula, what's it called, the hula, hula grub. Um, he has just been absolutely slaying these fish with his hula grub today.
morning guys welcome to another episode of fish with pits um, hopefully you guys enjoyed yesterday's episode with Diego um, for those of you guys who haven't seen it yet I went to San Hollow in Utah which is a place I've never been before uh, me and my friend Diego fished from 10 a.m. until about 2 p.m. so the worst possible time for summertime fishing especially the water temperature was high 80s low 90s in all the areas that we went out there uh, and we still managed to pull around 14 fish. 10 were his, because <laughs> he's a much better fisherman and has much better knowledge than I do. Um, but we really used our knowledge. We didn't. We only used the graph to, to, to check on depth and safety. Um, this is a rental boat, and the water levels change out here in the desert so much, so we wanted to make sure we weren't buzzing down the strait or buzzing down the coast, and then hit a sandbar that's two feet deep when we were just in 30 feet water. So. Anyways, enough about yesterday. Today, we are at Lake Mojave. Uh, we're going to Lake Mojave. I'm actually in Boulder City, Nevada right now. Um, we're going to Lake Mojave. So that's fed by Mead. Mead dumps the water into Mojave um, through the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam has it at around 57 degrees as well the water temperature is out there. So when it comes out of Hoover Dam, it's 57. So I'm hoping that when it hits Mojave, that it will be, I don't know, I'm hoping mid 70s as opposed to high 80s yesterday. The fish were just so sluggish. Um, when it's high 80s, the fish don't really want to eat that well. Um, so we're gonna head out there. We're gonna see what we can find. Same thing, we'll use the graph um, to check water depth, water temperature, stuff like that. Uh, but I won't use it to try to find fish because that's not fair because a lot of people, one, don't have a boat and two, they don't have a graph. Um, so we will rely strictly on our knowledge and we will look for fish where we typically do. So. I'll be talking a little bit more today, trying to walk you guys through my thought process and what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, man, let's go find some fish. I always appreciate you guys watching and commenting and sharing. So thank you guys so much that have been with me um, since I started this channel just a few months ago. Um, I haven't really exploded yet, but I have received a lot of love um, and more subscribers than I thought I would have already. So thank you guys once again uh, for just sticking through some of these videos i know i'm not the best filming if at filming and things like that yet but i'm working on it so anyways let me shut up and uh wait for chad to show up we're going to grab some food at mcdonald's here and then we're going to head to the lake so i'll see you guys on the water stay tuned all right guys so we made it to lake mojave right now we're actually still in the colorado um mojave's behind us we are going to uh try to chase down some smallmouth we're gonna, probably going to catch some stripers too with the action that we've seen so far this morning um this is my buddy chad he's here with me today and uh, yeah, so this is part two of the instructional video of trying to find these fish. So right now we are, I don't know, 50 yards offshore, 60 yards offshore, and we're still, it's only eight and a half feet. So um, it's really, really shallow. The water's really low. So we're going to try to play it safer um, so we don't destroy this boat. But other than that, well, I'll have my GoPro on. I'm about to strap it on, and we're going to catch some fish. Ready to? Let's do it. Started the morning off right. Some coffee. Yeah. All right. So listen, guys. We um, it was actually last weekend, and I did this fishing. I made this video for you guys, and um, it's a lot harder to make the video that I thought I wanted to make for you. Um, day one was great. I got to go out with Diego. Sorry. I got to go out with Diego, and um, I mean, we had a great time. He re he really taught me a lot. Um, we tried some different spots out. What we did. So um. First things first, any irregularity that you see in the water, whether it be a random bush, a random tree, a random rock, a random hole, um, a lot of times you'll see grass underwater and you'll see a hole in that grass, pitch something into it. Um, you're not really gonna find the wrong thing to pitch because um, if you pitch it in that hole three or four times and don't get a bite, switch um, or move on. There might not be a fish there. But um, if you wanna use a Mondo worm, 10 inch worm, do it. If you want to throw a Ned Rig in there, do it. I would prefer to use Ned Rigs off of rocks uh, and stuff like that, but a jig, a creature bait, um, I mean, anything you guys have, just pitch it in there. It's really, really hard to go wrong in that uh, situation. So any irregularity that you see, throw some kind of soft plastic in there, jiggle it around, um, make it enticing for the fish, see what happens. Second thing, when he was filming apart, your drop shot hook faced the correct way to make sure you get more hookups. Uh, when the fish bite 
and I was trolling a Kai Tech behind us on accident. I wasn't doing it on purpose. I had casted, he wanted to shoot this segment, so I just left, let it sit there. We were in 20 foot of water, and then out of nowhere, I feel tap tap. Try to set the hook, and I'm like, damn, I missed it. Five seconds later, I mean, a thump. Start reeling it in, and it was the biggest fish that I believe we caught all day. He did catch one towards the end that was pretty damn big out of this bush. Um, but I mean, it was hands down my biggest fish I caught all weekend. Um, and uh, the dude just slammed it out of nowhere. So as the summertime comes along, look deeper for these fish. I know a lot of people say it, but they say it for a reason. You wanna find some kind of drop off where these fish are gonna hang out. And they, um, you know, one, the water's a little bit colder. Um, especially if they're around grass, it's more oxygenated than the top of the water. Um, because with, with the water being warmer, um, there's just not much going on up there. Underneath, you have more life, you have more aquatic vegetation, fish can hide, they can ambush, and you have more oxygen. But the bigger thing is the water's a little bit colder. You know, it's gonna be in that mid 70s instead of 86, 87 degrees, which makes the fish sluggish, believe it or not. Um, so in a situation like that, um, I like to throw some kind of weedless swim bait because there's typically some some um, grass down there. So throw a throw a Kai Tech that's been Texas rigged on an um, underweighted hook, or you can throw a Kai Tech weightless. You can throw a fluke. Um, look up flukes. Flukes are really really good. I advise you guys to check out Fluke Master on YouTube as well. Excellent excellent fisherman as a whole, and but he can teach you some crazy awesome crazy good things about fluke fishing. Um, so in a situation like that, deep water, drop off, use a fluke. Um, later in the day, we found a rocky, a rocky cliff. On that rocky cliff portion, um, I was throwing my swim bait. Diego was throwing his jig and bouncing it off of rocks and flipping it under rocks and his drop shot. Excellent, excellent spot to do that kind of stuff. Same thing, find irregularities, throw things where you need to find them. I mean, throw things in spots where there might be fish let it ride man hold on you're going to get a bite at some point eventually um so any irregularity throw a drop shot um throw some type same thing you can throw a monster worm he was using a hula grub on a jig head that was incredible i mean every freaking cast the kid was catching a fish um anything that's going to resemble a crawl in an area like that fish are going to smoke it without a doubt i without a question also in a situation like that Use a crankbait, bounce them off the rocks. You're gonna destroy crankbaits doing this and you're gonna lose them. It's part of the game, man. Um, doing that kind of stuff is gonna get a reaction bite out of fish. If you're banging it off of rocks where they're hanging out, you're gonna get a reaction bite. Um, so that covers that. Next day, we go to Lake Mojave. We thought we were gonna have a great morning. The morning started out awesome. We could see some fish on the fish finder, um, but it was just absolute garbage. So um, just do do your best and natural colors don't really matter um, it's what people say match the hatch if you're in a very very highly pressured area you want to match the hatch um, but when you go to places big as Lake Mead there are areas that are pressured but right now we're using right now I'm using clown colors um, and fish are still biting these clown colors that I'm throwing around so um, less worry about your color more about your presentation and where you're throwing it because the best rule that I ever heard from somebody who's a lot better fisherman than I am is if you throw a bait where there's not fish, they're not gonna bite. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the color is. So um, anyways, I hope that guy teaches you a little bit. Watch the video coming up. It's Saturday and Sunday. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, leave comments. I will shoot a better version of this video later this year. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed what you see. And as always, thank you for watching these videos. Please, please, please start subscribing and sharing these videos with your friends. We're trying to grow the video channel more and more. So subscribe share and enjoy the video. Thanks guys.